Hello everyone, here PSST.1. Today, the second interview of the channel. We talk about a Spanish artist. He is Gezo, a king of the glitch. He also founded Paleo Magazine. So, enjoy! How and why did you start this job? I'm a graphic designer by profession and uh, some years ago I decided to start doing like uh, visuals, live visuals because before I was for a while working doing video art and even longer uh, years ago I was, do, uh, I was digging and f I had the feeling that I was missing the live component so I stopped digging because I thought it was too many fields where I had my hands on so I decided to moving to all the images and then doing visuals live offered me what I was missing from DJ, that is uh, perform live and, and control uh, image in real time. So at the end it was, I think, like a logical evolution from graphic design into something that I could still be excited. About your website, why is it called God is a Glitch? On one side there is uh, the history of God is a Glitch. It's because um, um, long years ago when uh, an old camera I have started doing glitches, I get fascinated by it. Uh, it was totally random glitches. It was not this uh, generated or artificially generated. It was uh, totally real, natural glitches. And I started being fascinated and using it. I have been before that, being a designer, I always used to mistake, error. I was a fan of David Carson, Neville Brody, and all these kind of aesthetic of mistakes. So I always used uh, that as a tool for pushing my work in, in an experiment. And Glitch uh, was something that uh, in that moment when I appeared in, in my life, it was like the perfect thing for investigating. Not only how it works, but also conceptually. And, um, and the glitch, it's for me like an idea of um, what is random, but nature and, and beautiful at the same time, because you don't need to control it, it just generates its own aesthetic. So in that sense, uh, yes, so God is a glitch is the, um, the f I would say like when you cultivate and get the products of all the previous work. So in that sense, uh, when I get invitation, the invitation for Atonal, or when I collaborated with Platoon, or with uh, Adobe After Effects, or with Kraken, I see it. There is a lot of uh, luck, but it's also a matter of uh, people seeing uh, the evolution and recognizing. Okay, this is your personality. I like it. It's website is not only a portfolio website, but it's also a blog. Why is it important to have a blog today, in your opinion? Uh, there are different reasons for the blog in my website. Um, on one side, it's connected with my one of the most important phases in my life and in my career, that it was when I created Paleo Magazine and I was working as journalist and curator of content. And I found that through all that work of researching, looking for artists to publish, the artists that I like, uh, I helped myself to find my own language, my own voice. So um, it's something I didn't want to stop. Having a blog uh, will help me to keep myself on the duty of looking for stuff and sharing it because I love sharing it. So it's a way also of promoting my work, not directly, but in an indirect way, to help my, my work being pushed into a first row, yeah. As you told me, you had this important magazine, Bellio magazine. Can you tell me the story of, uh, of this period? I can summarize a bit the, the history of Bellio in the sense that we started in 1999 and back then there was no magazines like that, like mixing graphic design art, graffiti, urban street art, uh, music, performance, all in one magazine with an aesthetic that was not classic but very new. Uh, 
focus not in a, in, in a serious uh, audience like all audience, but focus more into spread uh, information between people of my age. So we, my brother and me, did a, a magazine uh, that filled the, the gap that we wanted. I mean, that was the magazine I would like to buy. So we created that. It grew it because there was nothing like that. So it looked at the end. At the beginning, I didn't know it was going to be successful or not. But uh, it turns out that a lot of people was looking for something like that. Then other magazines like ours appeared in Spain. But uh, in our history, we just keep on growing. We started as uh, distributing in different countries. We started translating the magazine and having it bilingual in English and Spanish. We started publishing books, organizing exhibitions, uh, then a festival. The thing is like whatever came into our way, we wanted to do it. Just that we were hungry of doing things. We wanted to do everything. And that was a great experience because we learned a lot and we collaborated with many artists that we wanted and we made great contacts and, and, and great friendships. The most important thing I learned, I think, is uh, first that if you want to do something, just do it. It doesn't matter how hard, how difficult, you just quit everything and start doing it. And the other thing we learned is that um, money comes and goes and we have the moments that were nearly to be bankrupt and moments where we earn a lot of money suddenly with one project. And the thing is like, if you play your cards, if you really trust what you're doing, at the end it works. You in your own style, that is what is difficult. Did you close the magazine during the crisis uh, or there was uh, other reason? During the crisis, um, I always say the crisis was not only economical, it was also in the moment that Facebook and all the social media was starting to be a relevant thing. So for us, uh, when the crisis started, we were still publishing and with the years we realized that about two things. First, that uh, people were not interested anymore in, in physical objects and all the information, all the culture that's been consumed through internet for free. And in that moment there were people offering like, yeah, you can translate your magazine into a digital platform with a PDF that people can read in a tablet. And that was, we thought that was, that was bullshit because you can't sell information that is digital because at the end someone is going to rip it off and put it for free. So we thought like, okay, maybe it's time to stop printing and maybe it's time to keep, I mean, keep on our work on the website that it doesn't have the expenses that a magazine has or a publishing house has because we were at the end, we transformed the magazine into a book. Uh, the thing is like, um, you, we removed the problem of storage, of, of physical office. We just virtualized everything. And our last step was even to sell our office in Spain because we just wanted to be virtual, to disappear, to have the less expenses possible. And on the other hand, the crisis uh, came exactly in the moment that I think my brother and me felt the need of focusing on personal projects. So we only, I think we only felt sad of uh, finishing publishing and, uh, and, and, and all the activities with Belio due to the people who were following us. But personally, before the Be before Belio, during Belio, and mainly after Belio, my brother and me had our own projects, our own artistic interests, and it was like, okay, it's about time to close one, time, one, one phase of our life and start in a new one. And this new time, uh, it's, you are there not like, uh, I don't know, like an amateur. You, you learn a lot with all the experience from distribution, promotion, and you, ha you manage to make contacts and know how the art world uh, works and also the gallery, how they work and uh, the festivals, the fundings. So it's something like all this was like a big preparation for now learning how to make my own ca career as an artist. And uh, I think like uh, I don't regret uh, finishing it because uh, I, now I'm excited again about doing things I didn't do before.